I haven't pulled any power from the grid in over a week. And I'm not talking about just net power. I'm saying no power. I've been experimenting with the Tesla Powerwall time-based control versus self-powered mode. Those are the two settings that the Tesla Powerwalls give you. So to summarize both settings, self-powered basically uses the Powerwall as soon as the sun goes down until the sun comes up. Whereas time-based control, you pull in who your utility provider is and you pull on pull in your time of uh, time of use rate plan. And it basically takes the most expensive part of the day and runs your house off the power walls then. Here's a few things that I like and don't like about both. The time-based control is great because flat out people need to understand that batteries, like they help you arbitrage the time of use rate plans from a utility. And first of all, if you have solar and you have battery and you're not on time of use, like you have to get on time of use. That's a big part of how you um, make your money back and how you like make the most out of your system. And if you're considering going solar, considering getting a battery, you also have to understand time of use rate because you, your, your utility charges you different prices for different points during the day. Okay. And so the battery helps you run your home off of that during the most expensive part. So anytime you are pulling energy from the grid, you're pulling during non-expensive times and during the expensive times, ideally you're still exporting back to the grid. So inside the settings, it'll tell you that time of use control is how you lower your bill the most. I don't love that sentence. I, I understand why they have that in there. And I understand that time of use is the probably the best just default for the most amount of people because that is how you get the lowest bill. But it's not fully encompassing the kind of future of where I think like monetizing your surplus behind your own meter is going. And so this last week I've been experimenting with just turning on self-powered and just getting the like, what is my grid export? What is my grid export? And I've also been toying around with only charging our Tesla Model Y off surplus or off surplus solar. And so to me, it just makes the curve of the day way cleaner because another thing you are still charged non-bypassable charges for power that you pull in from the grid, even if you net pay it back. So like I've, I've been on net zero the entire year, all of 2023, but I've only been on like zero pulling from the grid the past like eight or nine, 10 days or so. So I believe the future is you turning on self-powered and then any time that there's surplus that would be going back to the grid, it goes to your own monetizable machine inside your house so that you're monetizing your own surplus energy rather than getting paid below market rate to send it back to the grid. Because you can look this up online, look up the California duck curve, the duck solar curve. There's so much solar energy during the middle of the day that we aren't able to use it all. The, or at least that's what the utilities say. And the, the curve kind of does represent that. Like so many people are producing solar during the day, but they don't have battery storage and they don't have a way to monetize the surplus during the day that is just like being offloaded on the utility, but they can't give it to anyone or they can't sell it to anyone. And so that's why your price to sell it back is so low. And that's why you have to invest in batteries and invest in ways to monetize your surplus at your own house. Here's, I want to stay on the time of use for the Tesla battery, but one thing I don't like is that as soon as 4 p.m. hits, all of the solar starts feeding back and I start pulling from the battery rather than the home using all of the solar and then supplementing with the battery. I don't know why it does that. Like I want more granular control over where the energy is going because in a perfect world, I would say every single day, like be on self-powered mode and then every single day, like have the order of what I want to happen to where fill up the battery, fill up the car, then start the Bitcoin miners, like fill up the battery, fill up the car, start the Bitcoin miners. And if at any point in the inside the home, if like the oven turns on or we need the air conditioning during the middle of the day, then supplement from the battery, supplement from the battery, and then know to turn off the miners to then refill the battery so that we head into the evening with 100%. Because that's what it does from the grid anyways. But you're basically then just treating your battery as the grid and you have your order of events of everything where you want the energy to go. That's where it's all going. And so the two choices you have right now are self-powered versus time of use. 
And I believe there's gonna be so many more choices in the future and you're gonna be able to program the order of events and where you want your energy to be going all the time. That's a little bit of what I've been trying to do with my smart um, power disbursement unit, my part smart PDU that I have the Bitcoin miners plugged into. But even that, I'm not able to throw in like logic to it yet. I'm only able to set time-based controls. So probably what I'm gonna run a deeper experiment on is being on self-powered and then running the miners, you know, every day from 12 to three or every day from 10 to three or 11 to three, something like that. And so, and seeing just day after day after day, does the power wall stay full, the car stay full and do the miners run for those five hours and are we zero from the grid? If I can get that, that's like as close to kind of automation as I can get with the current tools, you know, we have available. So if that's interesting, watch these next videos and comment below, you know, what your strategy is for what setting your power walls are on.